8-4. Ben Johnson, remember him? Has the Goodwill Games record. The all-time best performers in the men's 100 meters. Donovan Bailey will top that list at 9.84. Leroy Burrell, then Carl Lewis, Frankie Fredericks. Frankie Fredericks not competing here. Maurice Green is, so is his good friend and his training partner, Otto Bolden. Both clocking 9.86. Let's go back. The 100 meters in Atlanta. As Donovan Bailey stakes his claim as the world's fastest human, blazing to Olympic gold in world record time. Fast forward to the 1997 World Championships last summer, Athens, Greece. Keep your eye on lane three. Bailey met his match in Maurice Green, running a 9.86, two hundredths of a second off of Bailey's record. For Maurice Green that day, almost everything was absolutely perfect, as it has to be when you're running in the 100 meters. There's so many things in the 100 meters that you have to do, and you have to do it all in nine seconds. It's first you have to react to the gun, then you have to get block clearance, and from there you have to have a great drive phase. And from the drive phase, you have to have a transition. And from your transition, you have to accelerate, and accelerate, you have to finish. here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. Ernie Johnson back at you here along with Marty LaCorey and Kara Lewis. The excitement is running through this place, folks. What has Donovan Bailey got for him tonight? Well, this is, a, this is the event where there's a lot of trash talk, both amongst the performers in it and the fans of the sport. It's a long-running feud between Canadian sprinters and U.S. sprinters. They had Harry Jerome in the 60s, they had Ben Johnson in the 80s, and now they've got Donovan Bailey. And he's a formidable opponent. He runs a monthly ad in the track magazine it says, I'm not the enemy, speed and time are, but really the rest of the world looks at it as a U.S.-Canadian rivalry, and Donovan's been saying all year, the Americans have been running fast, but they've peaked too soon, I'll be ready when it counts at the Goodwill game. He has a knack for coming up big on nights like this. He did it in the Olympics, everybody in the field knows they've been running faster than him, but when it really counts, he's the guy who can do it. How about Maurice Green and Otto Bolden in this field? Well, I'll tell you, for the longest time, it's been a situation where two athletes working together as Maurice Green and Otto Bolden, that is what brings out the fastest in two athletes. You know, when you run together every single day against a world-class athlete, it only brings out the best in each of these guys. They train with John Smith out in Los Angeles. In fact, Maurice Green went out to Los Angeles to train with Otto Bolden after a dismal year in 1996. Since then, he has been running very fast. Yes, there is some trash talking. As you can see, his head bobbing right there. That's a time when each athlete has to go within themselves and concentrate on what will get them to the line first. He walked right past Donovan Bailey, and Donovan Bailey didn't even look at him. Eyes were closed. Everybody in their own world right now. It's going to be Maurice Green in three, Donovan Bailey in four, Otto Bolden in five, Craig Sager has spent some time down on the track just moments ago. Let's see what's going on down there now as we go to the Craig Live. Well, it's Maurice Green and Otto Bolden with Donovan Bailey between them. When they came up, Otto Bolden stared down Donovan Bailey, then ignored him. Maurice Green stared at him like a prize fighter. Finally, Donovan Bailey started to break things up. He started to laugh, started to relax. I walked up to the starting gate. I asked him why he was so relaxed. He said, because we're all taking these things too seriously. I do not run my best when I'm serious. I am trying to relax in this starting gate. Ernie? Possibly uh, easier said than done to relax at a time like this. They're all on their feet here waiting for the start of this race, the 100 meters. And in lane one, Bruni Surin of Canada, silver medalist behind Donovan Bailey at the 95 Worlds. Dennis Mitchell, the defending Goodwill Games champion, is in lane two, and he appears focused. There's Maurice Green, feeling it in lane three. Donovan Bailey, right next door in lane four, the reigning Olympic champion and world record holder. Next to him, lane five, Otto Bolden of Trinidad and Tobago, winner of the 200 on Sunday, ran a 9.86 in April at the Mount Sac Relays. John Drummond, the clown prince, as he is proud to say, of track and field, and mighty quick. He's in lane six. Tim Harden in lane seven, won the U.S. title in New Orleans last month, and Brian Lewis, the runner-up to Harden at the U.S. Championships, is in lane eight. 
You know, there's something to really say about the fact that these athletes have been running very fast. Donovan Bailey went down to Australia in February to run some real comfortable races, but he came up against one man named Maurice Green, who was what are you right doing down here? on the top of his game. There was a little bit of talk between the two guys and a few, few angry words, but now they are back. And you know, you have to look at it, peaking for the correct competition. And you have to wonder if the quick times that Otto Bolden has been running, the quick times that Maurice Green have been running. Have they run out of gas at this particular time in the season? What does your gut tell you about this thing? Do you get a feeling like, oh, I really feel it's a good night for Otto Bolden. I feel it's a real good night for Donovan Bailey. How you feel? Well, I think Green may have been on his way down, maybe with some rest. He may be back to where he was in April and May. I think Otto Bolden is right there at the top of his game, and Donovan Bailey is the one that has to really pull it out of the hat. He's the one that has to raise his game quite a bit. He's been running against competition that hasn't pushed him as much as the kind of competition Bolden gets from Maurice Green every day. A roar went up because the pole vault is still going on right now. It gives the guys a chance to straighten up and loosen up a little bit more. Well, it's, you know, it's a lot of pressure out there. And, and, you know, one of the most important parts of the 100 meters is reacting to the gun. And, of course, to react to the gun, you must hear the gun. While you're in the blocks, you need to block out every other sound except for the sound of a gun. And that is very, very difficult to do, especially since, you know, there's other events going on in track and field. You also have to block out what your competitors are thinking. Now, you wonder if Maurice Green and Otto Bolding are wondering what a Donovan Bailey can pull out of his hat. Because I'll tell you, the 96 Olympic Games, I do not think that anybody thought Donovan Bailey was in the type of shape that he was in order to win the Olympic championship. Who do we consider the world's fastest man right now, Marty? <laughs> I consider the man who wins when the top three or four guys get together. He is that man until he gets beaten again. Other people will say whoever holds the world record is the world's fastest human. But I say only the present counts and only the future is important. Hey, let me write that one down. Yeah, I, like I was that. just thinking, I was like, hey. They get set. Donovan Bailey has a new coach now, too. Former LSU coach, Lauren Seagrave, he's been working with. Now, don't be afraid if Donovan Bailey does not get out fast. He closes very quickly. I know we saw that in Atlanta in 96. Uh. Nope. We'll have to reload. <laughs> that was Bruni Surin of uh, Canada in lane one who, who made the jump. Now, if, if I think like an American and I'm into conspiracy theories, I would say that, that Donovan said, look, Bruni, I'm not going to go hard the first time you jump. Make them all use a been, little bit of energy. You, you, I've been thinking Gibson. about this too much. You've been much. watching Mel Gibson. You, watched, you saw that movie. Hey, the phone, phone's for you. It's, it's Oliver Stone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people have been discussing this for four months every day on the Internet. So you know there's what? a lot of theories. I have to say, though, when you get in a situation like this, and there's some cash on the line, I think that people get down the blocks to win any way they can. And at this point... You know, you're thinking, I have got to react to the gun. And you know, you've seen in Europe, you've seen in a lot of major competitions, they're trying to roll with the punches. Linford Christie was a perfect example in Atlanta. He was trying to roll out of the gun. He happened to have gotten caught with two false starts. He was put out of the race. He did a lot of ooh and an ah and a lot of posturing. And I think perhaps really ruined the concentration of a lot of the other athletes in the event. But one person who was able to keep his head together and has done so time and time again is Donovan Bailey. He said that, you know, when, when Linford was doing all that stuff, up. He said he just focused on his own lane and on himself. And at this point, the youngsters, Maurice Green, Otto Bolden, need to concentrate on what they need to do. Focus again on the sound of the gun. Things are perfectly still. Even the pole vaulters have stopped at this point. All eyes on that line. And what will happen in the next 10 seconds or so?
Desmond Bailey of Canada crossed the line and about 25 meters later sat down, head in his hands. Now he's up. He shut down at about 80 meters, which you hate to see because uh, you don't want him to say, well, I had a bad start or... Well, he won't have to say that. He did. Well, I, I just hope he doesn't come up with excuses. Come on. Think you know, and you know what? Right there, you could have actually called that a jump of the gun. Did you see the reaction? Tim Harden jumped a little bit. That could have been called a false start. But at this point, you see Otto Bolden in the middle of your screen from Trinidad and Tobago and Maurice Green in lane three, already well out front. Donovan Bailey knows that he is clearly out of the race and just kind of trots across the line. But at this point, you see John Drummond also out well, but that is Otto Bolden leading the way right there as Maurice Green on the inside moves through. The most important part, again, about the 100 meters is another point. You must stay relaxed in the latter parts of the race. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you can run faster and faster throughout the whole race. Once you get about 60 meters, your top speed is gone. It's the person who can stay relaxed at that point. Otto Bolden, good friends with Maurice Green. You saw them celebrating together. And John Drummond's with them down there, and so is Craig Sager. Well, right now we have the world record holder, Donovan Bailey, but he is not on the medal stand with me. Maurice Green, Otto Bolden, and John Drummond. Mo, what about the start? You exploded out of those blocks. Well, I know I had to capitalize on the start if I wanted to win the race, because I know these two are very tough at the beginning, so I have to be even tougher. Otto, you won the 200, now you come in second here. You guys train together, how does that help you? That is uh, the best atmosphere for training that there is in the world. And uh, we came out here and uh, by the grace of God, everybody finished one, two, three. Hey, sir, sir. John, we talked about a lot of trash talking at the start. We even saw Donovan Bailey try to get Mo to me maybe too. loosen up he a little bit. You're the clown prince. What was going on at the starting gate? What does this victory mean? Love well, first of all, oh. I want to dedicate this race to my coach who just passed in Philadelphia. I came from Philadelphia to New York from a funeral, and I wanted to give yeah. all I had for him because it's my first race at uh, Nationals. But uh, there was a whole lot of uh, mind games going on. I mean, people sending us cards and uh, talking about they had, you know, conversations with us. But we ignored it, and we just wanted to come out here and let people know we're all about track and field and about making the sport. Well, well, HSI, baby. Well, well, obviously, people talk about the world record holder. You're the world champion. Marty LaCorey says the winner of this race is the world's fastest man because he's the one that won the last race. Yeah, next you week. feel that way? <laughs> I guess I'm the world's fastest man. Till next week. Uh, I'm just getting started. All right, let's go back, Ernie. And who are we to argue? Maurice Green wins the 100 meters. Otto Bolden second. Brian Lewis takes the bronze. Let us go back to Jim Lampley. Rolled out real late, and um, and, I, and I really wasn't gonna um, I, I, like I realized I could have pressed and um, and uh, come back and, and and maybe catch catch those guys. But I mean, it wasn't. I was down so I was down so bad at, at like 10 or 15 meters. I just I just felt I just run on through and and uh, you know the Grand Prix season continued.